Readings and salutations. Neutrality, not really a popular concept these days, because let's face it, especially on the internet, just about every blithering idiot out there tries to convince you that you should sell your life, your soul and your firstborn in order to chase whatever idiocy they are selling. And, well, I'm no different. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification, you'll be notified of my musings in the future, and you can always watch my musings from the past. And this entire intro was completely unnecessary, it is not even related to the topic at hand, which is a neutral gear on your mountain bike. Alright, before we go any further, let us first answer the very pertinent question, why would anyone want to do something like that? Hashtag. Here's the reason. This is your typical bicycle suspension, this particular kind is an FSR or horse link design, that's not really relevant, because just like with every competently designed suspension for a bicycle, as this suspension is being compressed, the distance between the rear axle and the bottom bracket is going to increase. Why is that being done? The reason for doing this is very simple. Your legs have weight. And as you are pedaling your bike, this weight is being shifted up and down, fore and aft, causing the center of mass of the bicycle to follow suit. This up and down movement acts like a hammer on your suspension, causing it to compress. One, two, three. On each pedal stroke, the, com the suspension is going to compress just a little bit through the sheer force of you pedaling. It is addressed by introducing positive feedback loop to your suspension using your drivetrain. In essence, as the suspension is being compressed, the distance from the bottom bracket to the rear axle is going to increase. This increase causes the chain to pull the wheel just a little bit, which is going to use the grip of the tire on the terrain to stop the suspension from compressing. Essentially, the more it wants to compress, the more it's going to be resisted by the grip of your tire using the chain to pull it. And this essentially stops all the pedal bob on competently designed bicycles. When it comes to the topic of today's video, all of those machinations cause one very important thing. Your suspension is being less sensitive than it could have been considering its layout. And how to fix this if you want to get the last bit of performance out of your suspension? Well, if you're not going to be pedaling all that much, all you need to do is to decouple your drivetrain from your suspension. And you can do this by introducing a neutral gear, essentially allowing the chain to slip on the cassette. And this finally brings us to the core of today's video, which is look how pretty my bike is. Here you have peak performance, my cube urban freeride monster, which I have set up with a pro wheel claw uh, crank set, a 2 by 8 drivetrain, a 3626 cogs and 11 to 25 cassette, which is the specialty of today. Because I didn't use an actual 8-speed cassette, I used a 10-speed cassette because that's the shifter I have and I took out a 28 and 32 from a 10 speed 1132. Essentially making this an 8 speed but with a 10 speed spacing and quite a bit of space inside. And considering the topic of today's video that all of this space gives me space to make a neutral gear. So let's make one.
uh, this is the end result. I'm going to save myself the embarrassment and I'm not going to show you how I turned this on my machine. It wasn't pretty. Uh, this is, I think, 6807 bearing, which is going to fit inside. And this is with the bearing pressed inside. As you can see, it can rotate freely. So let's mount it to the free hub. Okay, here we are. As you can see, I have mounted the cog. It rotates pretty nicely in each direction. Let's run through all the gears. As you can see, this works. Unfortunately, this doesn't. The return from the neutral to the first usable cog appears to be very, very lazy. We'll see how it goes, well, when actual riding comes along. And now is the part when we are going to be discussing my lies. Because, you see, I've been lying to you from the part where I showed you the turning to uh, this very moment. Because what you saw is a reenactment of what I actually did when I uh, finished machining the part, because I've been riding it for the last week or so, and I've got some conclusions. And the conclusions are, first of all, the effect is actually there, it's actually noticeable, but it's very, very slight. Maybe it is a case of this particular bike, my cube, and it's suspension geometry, maybe it's something else, maybe I'm just old and fat and I can't feel anything, or maybe I'm just not riding in the pro downhill rider level, possibly, maybe, I don't know, you decide. Also, as I was riding the thing, three extra issues cropped up. First of all, I implemented this as a last cog on the cassette, just next to my lowest gear, so unfortunately my drivetrain doesn't tell me that I'm switching to the uh, lowest gear on the cassette because, for example, I can't look there, I don't have a gear indicator and it's raining and what have you. Point being, I found myself in a situation, not once, not twice, several times, that I thought I still have a lower gear, but I didn't. And as you can imagine, sudden loss of tension on your drivetrain is kind of jarring and can be dangerous. The second thing is that I implemented this as a lowest gear, but I would need this when I was riding downstairs quite fast and I would be on a high gear. So in order to get to the neutral, I need to click through the entire cassette, like four or five or six cogs, ride the stairs in a neutral gear, and then switch again to the higher cogs because I need that gear. That's not really user-friendly as you can imagine. The third problem of note is that I implemented my neutral gear as a plain cog. And plain cog, as you can imagine, are pretty good at holding the chain securely and that is something you want when you want to use the neutral. After all, you're doing the funky stuff, you don't want to have problems with your drivetrain, I guess. Now, the problem is that if you want to stop using the neutral, then you need to click the release paddle on your shifter twice because the cog is so good at holding the chain that massaging your shifter once isn't really doing it for it. Unfortunately, you are also not the, on your lowest gear at this point, you are on the second lowest gear. Now, if you expect this behavior, 
not much of an issue, you can work around it. However, if you accidentally switched to the lower gear because you expect to have it and you didn't, then you are in the first stages of a cascade failure and that might get you stuck in deep mud. And as you can imagine, that's kind of an issue. I guess all of those problems can be solved by doing some sort of smart engineering. However, I'm not going to be bothered because I'm just having fun with my little project. I'm going to stick to what I have. However, if you are a venturing capitalist and you want to make massive amounts of money by making something like that, well, be my guess, obviously. However, what's the usage of something like this? Obviously, downhill bikes, freeride bikes, slope style bikes, everywhere where you want to squeeze every bit of performance out of your suspension, this can be beneficial, I guess. When it comes to enduro bikes, I think that something like this, stuck in the middle of the cassette, which is usually underutilized in the middle of the cassette, then something like this stuck into it might actually be beneficial for just about everyone when it comes to good old, well, good old-fashioned enduro riding, especially if you add some sort of electronic shifting which can automatically skip this neutral gear when it's not being necessary, then have a button that just go to neutral and bump down the trail. Anyhow, at this point my throat is actually getting pretty sore because I just am not happy with, well, my first take, so I actually take, I know, 20 of those, and then I get pretty tired. Anyhow, this is the end of the video. I thank you for your undivided attention. I hope to see you on the next one. Share, like and subscribe if you think this video was worth it. And I already told you that I'm going to see you on the next one, or at least I hope, and I'm now going to ramble, so this is the end.